All of you remember that home utility store we all hated going to as kids, but our parents would never stop taking us to. Yes, that's Bed Bath & Beyond. And just in case you've never heard of it, Bed Bath & Beyond is a store, kind of like Target but solely for home textiles, housewares, and decorative home accessories. You could walk into one of these stores and find everything from a foot mat to flower pots, kitchenware or even a cozy duvet for cold nights. But what happens beyond the Bed Bath & Fame? How has one of America's most loved big box retail giants cascaded towards the incorrigible debris it is today? Let's find out. Founded by businessmen Warren Eisenberg and Leonard Feinstein, Bed Bath & Beyond Incorporated began as a small line and store in Springfield, New Jersey. Its founders once handled management positions at a now-defunct store called Arlen's. The store began to face rocky times just like any other, and these two colleagues thought that the market would tilt towards specialty stores in no distant time. For this reason, they decided to break away from Arlen's and start their discount store for specialty items in a home niche. In 1971, they established Bed & Bath, a convenience store that stayed true to its name in terms of the kind of merchandise it carried. Their speculations proved right for a while, and by 1985 they had opened 17 stores spread across New York and California. Bed & Bath's first years in business set off with excellent leadership, dedicated investment in improvements, and qualitative competition. This speedy success recorded the opening of their first superstore in 1985. The expansion was in a bid to remain at a solid competitive par with other big-box retail stores in the same niche, such as Pacific Linen, Luxury Linens, and Linens and Things. It wouldn't take decades more before they had several such stores in major cities throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. At this point, Warren and Leonard needed a name for their brand that would flawlessly depict its perceived growth, so in 1987 they went for the name Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond grew massively in multiples over the next few years. Everything was taking a sky-high dash, including the value of partnering brands on their inventory to expanding store locations. What began as a 24-store chain in the early 2000s rose exponentially to a whopping 1,552 stores at the beginning of 2018. The store chain was soon acknowledged among the Fortune 500 and Forbes Global 2000. The company went public in 1992, trading its shares on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange, under the ticker BBBY, till this very day. Its largest competition at the time was a fellow big-box retail store, Linens & Things, which it effectively outlived when the American economy sort of tanked in 2008. Following this, Bed Bath & Beyond became the unrivaled boss of its category, or what many industry analysts prefer to call a category killer. Thanks to its massive inventory, large store chain and competitive prices. Bed Bath & Beyond, just like any other new store in town had a list of reasons why it was frequented by customers and invited by competitors. First was the massive inventory. The aisles were usually full of goods and the shelves were stacked from floor to ceiling with a vast array to choose from. Customers loved that they could have any brand they needed for their homes in one spot, alongside the closest alternatives for more precise comparison. This informed their purchase decisions and ensured that every customer left the store happy and satisfied. Another thing was the flexible return policy. Faulty goods could be easily returned without much banter and immediately replaced with new ones. The decentralization of the Bed Bath & Beyond stores was another thing that made them even more fascinating. Unlike other big-box retail store chains, inventory purchases were not carried out by a select set of dedicated buyers. Instead, branch management took care of such purchases. This led to autonomy and variety of some sort in the sense that the exact goods carried by each branch vary depending on the needs of their local market, thus eliminating the cringy uniformity that most other stores are known for. Their customer service was also top-notch, given that they needed to be up-to-date with customers' needs. Bed Bath & Beyond employees readily made themselves available to their patrons. This customer friendliness contributed heavily to the brand's rapid rise, but not as much as their famous coupons. Bath & Beyond was most widely known for its almost crazy use of coupons. They went from as little as $5 off purchases to $10 off, and then a whopping 20% off select brand products. This ensured that people bought more than they initially planned and that no one ever left the stores empty-handed. All these and more were Bed Bath & Beyond's best practices for customers, but little did they know that these same things would cause an irreversible downfall.
As the years rolled by, Bed Bath & Beyond's financial stiffness disabled the company from investing in technological advancements. In addition, the management was accused of having relaxed their competitiveness after beating down a traditional rival Lennon's End Things. They underestimated the strength of the digital shift from manual and offline stores to online stores. Their online presence has been defined as clunky and inefficient. Customers have complained of having to go through several steps to order their goods, which is unacceptable. Moreover, Ben Bath & Beyond have lost its uniqueness due to the lack of private label brands and high and extravagant prices. Many of the goods they carry can be bought at other stores and lower costs. This has caused the company to lose both customers and revenue. Their no-brainer coupons haven't had it easy either. It has been held responsible for the losses incurred by the company as 20% off unnamed brands at every given time of the year means a massive loss in the absence of new traffic. Simply put, this has been one of the most disheartening implosions of all time in retail. But the worst is yet to come. In recent times, three activist investment firms, Legion Partners, Marcellin Capital Management, and Encore Advisors, came together to stage a safe bed bath and beyond mission, stating that the retail venture would have another shot at a bright future if its management and leadership strategies are overhauled and re-strategized. Coming together, the group of activists levied a few charges against the company. They have received backlash for having retained a particular board of directors longer than a decade and more than any other company has ever done. This translated to a lack of fresh ideas or perspectives to keep up with the changes in the industry. They have also been accused of overpaying top members of the company, spending money on rebuying their shares and a host of other strategic missteps. For this reason, many believe bankruptcy is an option and nothing can be done to save the company. However, the business activist firms are not backing down just yet. They announced their intention to remove current CEO Stephen Temayers and restructure Bed Bath & Beyond's current board of directors in March 2019. As examples of poor business practices at Bed Bath & Beyond, the activist investors cited the acquisition of Bye Bye Baby, which was founded by two of Bed Bath & Beyond co-founders Leonard Feinstein's children and the acquisition of Chef Central, which co-founder Warren Eisenberg's son founded. This pressure led to the resignation of five independent directors on April 22, 2019, as well as the restructuring of the company's board to include only 10 directors rather than the previous 12. Bed Bath & Beyond announced on May 13, 2019 that CEO Stephen Temers would step down and resign his seat on the board of directors. Temers was replaced as interim CEO by Mary Winston. In an attempt to make much-needed changes, Mark Tritton, previously Target's chief merchandising officer, took over as CEO of Bed Bath & Beyond on November 4, 2019. He indeed came on board with perfect strategies to get the company back on track, including decluttering the stores, changing the interior designs to make them easier to interact with, and introducing private label brands, amongst others. However, the execution of his plans coincided with the COVID-19 pandemic, which caused a shipwreck in consumer behavior. This was when online stores began to thrive, and many on-ground stores like Bed Bath & Beyond began to fail severely. Soon, in August 2022, the company announced the closure of 150 underperforming stores and reduced its corporate and supply chain staff by about 20%. And this is when things got ugly. In September 2022, the chief financial officer for Bed Bath & Beyond, Gustavo Arnold, was indicted by the government for insider trading and breach of fiduciary duty. This means that he was doing some illegal things on the inside, including document forgery, to make it seem like the company was doing well on the stock market when it wasn't. He carried out these actions with the help of former Chewy CEO, Ryan Cohen. Ryan Cohen landed a share in the company by sending an open letter to the board of directors in March 2022, requesting that Bye Bye Baby be sold off at a fair price. After that, Bed Bath & Beyond agreed to grant Ryan Cohen three board seats in exchange for his cooperation and forming a committee to carry out his proposed plan. This new leverage enabled him to help Gustavo by making BBBY into a meme stock and boosting its online presence. How this works is that real stocks are made to rise in value by presenting them as entertainment and creating massive interactions about them on social media. However, this plan went horribly wrong. The government identified it as a pump and dump scheme, involving the illusion that the business was soaring even though it was crashing just to squeeze the rest of the profit out of it. Following this, Gustavo was charged with well over $1.2 billion in fraud and was going to serve a lot of time. To invade his inevitable fate, Gustavo plunged himself off his 18-story luxury apartment in Manhattan, popularly known as the Jenga building falling to his death.
And while this has raised a lot of controversies, the fate of the Bed Bath & Beyond company looks bleak, if not already at a point of no return. Is Bed Bath & Beyond Salvation? If you're enjoying this video and want to see more like this, do not forget to watch this exciting video we made about Jewel, 